Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World, and it's a Monday night. I know it's not Whiskey Wednesday, but it's a Monday Mule. I don't, I don't know what to say, but I want to welcome you all here today for a little live Q&A because I know a lot of stuff has been going on in travel the last couple of weeks, and I've needed to do a live feed to talk about things from Europe opening up to where you should go this summer and what information do I need to have to get that quarantine certificate thingy to make sure I can go where I want to go. So we're going to talk about a lot of different stuff today. So I want to give a special shout out to our patrons on Patreon and our members on YouTube and our superheroes out there to help us out. Uh, we just had a nice live chat with them before this. And I just want to give a special thank you to them for all they do to help us make these honest travel videos because I'll be honest, honest travel videos, a lot of times companies do not want to work with people that want to tell you everything you really need to know and not just sound like a commercial. So their support and your support means a lot different. So all those likes, subscriptions, views, makes all the difference in the world. And honestly, if you could just share Walter's World Travel Destination video, your favorite one on your Facebook, it would make a huge difference for us, okay? So just want to get that out of the way before we start getting into your, some of your questions because there are some things we really need to talk about. Like, for example, I'm drinking my, uh, well, it's Woodford and Ginger today. I was actually flying. I flew to Key West. Did We filmed down there, and I got to have my Jack and Ginger with the uh, Biscoff cookies. So it was back to flying again. And for those who think about flying, the numbers are almost back to where they were in 2019 this last week. Uh, it's it was We were in Atlanta, and uh, it was like every other day except masks were on. It was like any other normal day. So uh, just know that travel is coming back. I mean, you got to be safe masks and vaccines are a part of life and distancing and stuff, but people are getting back. And I've got to say the last week or two have been crazy full of news for travels. I know some of you saw our video on Europe is opening up. Yay. Uh, well, Europe is opening up, uh, but not right now. Greece is open. Like, I mean, if you look at it, Delta United have flights to the three main European places that are open, Iceland, Greece, and um, Iceland, Greece, and Croatia. So you can fly direct to the US from those places. Uh, so you can do that. But more places will open up. I know France and Italy mentioned that from June 30th, so starting from July, they should be open. Now, there's no 100% guarantee on everything. But if things stay the way they are and numbers keep getting better, hey, there's some there's some possibilities for some travel going on. But a lot of people wrote me and wanted to buy tickets right away and say, yes, let's go now. It's available. Let's go to Europe. Well, one of the things you got to realize is – it's not open right now, like today. Greece is, but not right now. So it's going to take time. You've got to plan ahead to see what's available for you. So just have a heads up for that. Now, I know I'm saying if you want to follow us on Instagram, you can go at Walter's World. Just go and follow me on there. Or if you can follow Jocelyn, who's way, 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 well, almost better looking than me. I don't know. Um, but her at Jocelyn, Walter's World. Uh, so we have stuff there. So you can say hi. She is not here today. She is out hanging with Caleb because it's Mother's Day and mothers do things with their babies. Like our live feed, uh, my mom was on here and you might be able to see her later tonight if she pops on. Uh, so we will have that. And I do want you to know, if I don't get a chance to your question, I don't answer when it first comes up, just know that your questions that are probably appearing on one of these sides are over here or however you're watching. I don't see all those right away. So I don't always get to them right away. So it's okay to post your question again. Um, I'm not, I'm not trying to skip anybody. I just don't always hear from them. And I know we just started up and I just totally made this one up. I wasn't really planning on doing it. I thought about doing one on Wednesday night, but man, it's just so much, so many emails I've been getting and so many comments and so many questions about traveling this summer. I thought we need to get on here and do some more, some more live feeds and getting your questions answered. And I got to tell you, I, I'm glad that we decided. So for in May and June, we'll be putting not just two, we'll be actually putting out three travel videos every week, every Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. There'll be new destinations coming up and extra videos during the week. So maybe there'll be a YouTube short, like a short little video, or it might be uh, a live feed or something. So we're going to try to do what we can to help people get ready to travel this summer because you know, sometimes traveling can be daunting, but traveling during a pandemic can be extremely daunting. And, and if you have questions about traveling during the pandemic or coronavirus or whatever, I know right now I just demonetized my entire video by saying those words. Um, you can actually go on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Walters World, and I have that playlist right near the top, so you can go there. Okay, so uh, just want to give you the heads up. So I see there's lots and lots and lots of questions already come through, so I do apologize. I see JL Jimmer is going to Colorado next week. Very cool. My my cousins live there, and 
they want us to get out there. So uh, we were going to be out there this last fall, but then our gear shift transmission broke and I couldn't get the keys out of the ignition. So we ended up spending an extra five or six days in Cheyenne, Wyoming, which was cool, but it meant we couldn't get down to Fort Collins and go to Steamboat, Rocky Mountain National Park. So that kind of sucks. So yes. Nico Sneeko, hey, yes, I was waiting for this video before I book. Yes, I'm glad I could help you out. Um, and I will be talking about the, the booking because honestly, people, when they say Europe is open this summer, it's not summer yet. So you can't go now. Now, Iceland, Croatia, Croatia uh, Greece, you can. But other places, you can't. Germany, hotels aren't even open yet. You can't stay. So you just know where you can go. So it's going to have to track and see what opens up. And I know, like I said, Italy and France have said they're going to open up from you know June 30th on or July 1st on. Uh, so I know my mom and I are going to France. We have that booked. But uh, yeah, there's it's going to be a lot of wait and see and see what the requirements are because what you're supposed to do and, and testing and everything is going to be very, very different. And what you need to, if you need to test before you come back home, you're going to have to stay up to date. And even while you're traveling, the, thing, the rules might change while you're out. So make sure you're keeping up to date with your local you know, state department or foreign ministry to help you out. So, oh, Scorpio Sue, thank you very much for the super chat and the support. I see the member button there, and Sue was on our live feed earlier. Thanks for all the new content. Slovenia is on my list now. I'm going to film in France. Of course I'm going to film in France, silly. We, I love going there. I've got probably more stuff to say and, and talk about with France. We have this summer coming up, we'll have the Don'ts of France coming out, the Don'ts of Paris, some other fun France stuff coming too. So don't worry. There will be plenty, plenty of French stuff to come. Uh, so we'll have that. And I'm glad you like the Slovenia videos, uh, Ljubljana and Slovenia itself. If you're looking for a hidden gem in Europe, I know that's just such a cliche to say a hidden gem, but honestly, people don't go to Slovenia because going to Slovenia, you don't pass through Slovenia to get places. Like, you know, oh, I passed through Belgium when I'm going from Germany to, to France, maybe. You know, you could do that. Or, or But but Slovenia is stuck there by itself, so you have to make it a point to go there, and it's well worth going to. So that's why... Big fan. I put out a video, the don'ts of Ljubljana, the shocks of Slovenia, what's know before you go to Slovenia, uh, so you can have a good time going there because uh, it is well worth going, well worth going. Um, let's see. Here's a question. Ram asks, do you need to quarantine when going to Hawaii? If you don't have a negative test, yes, you will have to quarantine. But if you have a negative test, and make sure it's the right one. I think they're using PCR right now. Uh, you can do that. And But right now, going to Hawaii is tough because – there's so few cars that you're hearing stories of thousand dollar rentals, you know, you know, five hundred dollar a day car rentals and stuff. So people are renting U-Hauls instead of cars. So yeah, it's 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 going to be a bit a uh, bit, bit crazy there. So so be be careful. Oh, what's up, Lane Griswold family vacay? Hope your Branson stuff went well. And good. That's this Wednesday, right? You have some stuff. You're talking about Branson. Uh, we just put a video out on the Don'ts of visiting Branson. So. Uh, a, a, a place that people like to visit in the middle of the U.S. That's nice. Oh, Nico Sneeko just booked Emirates flight to Greece. Lucky dog. Lucky dog. I love it. Vic Lau, thank you very much for watching our videos all the time. I appreciate it. Jocelyn, appreciate it. Caleb, the 14-year-old is probably embarrassed that you watch them, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. I appreciate it all. Chris Frankie, good to see you, and thank you for being a member. We appreciate it. Harry wants to know, Walter's World, would you – you should go to Thailand once it's open – you know, our one trip we were supposed to go, the day before I was booking, we got a wedding to go to, so that got canceled, but we will be going there. The, Thailand, we, the whole Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, we got that kind of planned together for about a two-month-long trip. So we have the stuff. I have all the books. I have all the stuff planned out. It's just finding the time now when we can go and when things open up. So uh, it will be there, Harry. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Not a spin. Oh, hello from Finland. Moin moin. <laughs> How are you? Uh, let's see. Kitos, I remember that. Oh, hello to the Depeche loving Darian. Yes, Darian loves his Depeche mode. Let's see. Oh, lots of stuff here. I'm sorry if I missed your stuff. Oh, oh, gee, thank you very much for the super chat. It says two Delta companion passes need to be used by year end. Any recommendations? Domestically to check out, well traveled, ready to travel again. So, um, what Boza, Montana. Uh, Savannah, Georgia. Um, I mean, you can do the old standbys like New Orleans and, and Las Vegas. Um, you could look at maybe go up into Maine. Um, I, I, I really enjoy Maine. Uh, that's one you could go to. There's flights up there, and there's not a lot. Well, there's tours in the summer to go there, but that could be one to go check out. 
Um, where's some places I've been to? Asheville, North Carolina is an interesting place to visit. Uh, you can go to, let's see, some other quick ones. Kansas City, Missouri. Honestly, Kansas City, Missouri, fantastic place to visit. Not a lot of people think about going there. That would be a good one to check out. Um, where are some other ones? Idaho. Shocking enough, I really liked Idaho. Really liked Idaho. So uh, there's also Wyoming. There's all kinds of good stuff going on. So so we're good there. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Harry. I will definitely get the the do's and don'ts of of, of Thailand. So uh, so we'll have my mom on in about five minutes. So we'll get some of these questions out of the way. Then we're going to bring in my lovely mother, who is uh, joining me tonight for some chats. But I want to get some of these questions out of the way so that we can talk about it. Because what we're going to talk about is some. Trips that we've gone on together as a father, or sorry, father, mother and son. And so I want to hear about some of your family experience to travel with your mother, because you know Mother's Day weekend was this weekend in the U.S. So there is that. Let's see. Mike, any tips on the Tetons and Yellowstone in early June? Book, book, book. If you haven't booked already, you're kind of screwed for some stuff. But book your spaces. I actually, Tetons is a lot easier to get around than Yellowstone. Um, cause one, one moose sighting will close down the roads and take you, it lets you wait for an hour and a half in Yellowstone. Teton's not as many issues. Um, but both are fantastic. You'll, you'll have a great time in both, but booking earlier, I know for Yellowstone, we actually stayed in Idaho. Um, and, uh, did that, we actually have a don'ts of visiting the grand Tetons video that can help you out. And I'll have the don'ts of Yellowstone out in a few weeks. So it'll be out before early June. So you can use that to help you out. So, so we have that. Mary Ellen's in the house. Good to see you. Thomas Reiser pointing out the room rates in New York City are incredibly good. Yeah, I mean, need that, need that. Patricia, I love your Savannah, Georgia videos. Flying there tomorrow. Oh, we were. I was just there. I was just there. We had such a good time. Actually, I just booked tickets today uh, to go back again later this year. And I have a don'ts of Savannah that will be coming out here. It will be too late for you. I'm sorry. Since you're going there now, but I'll have a don'ts of Savannah coming out. So uh, there is that. Let's see. Uh, so come on, you wolves. Ask, is Expedia a good website to book vacation packages? Actually, Expedia, if you use them, if, if you want to buy like higher end tickets, like first class tickets, um, you can buy first class tickets there, but book a hotel with it. And just by booking that hotel, you can knock the prices down by thousands of dollars for European flights. So in that respect, it can give you some really good deals for that. I tend to prefer to book directly with the hotels and book directly with the airlines just because I can save, um, sometimes I can save money on it, but also then Delta gets all the money or that mom and pop, air, uh, you know, bed and breakfast, they get all the money and they don't lose a percentage to a bookings.com or Expedia. Uh, so there is that, but I mean, they're fine. I, I've booked with Expedia before, so no, no, no problem there. Um, Hans Christensen, how are you and your family doing? Doing good, doing good. Can't complain. Uh, Jocelyn and Caleb are spending some time together for uh, Mother's Day, and they're back home. And Liam and I are here visiting Grandma and Grandpa. So uh, we're having a good time. John Burnett and Tybee. I was just out on Tybee Island on the beach two weeks ago uh, with the kids, so we had a good time out there. Mm. Joanna in Eastern Oregon. Uh, we were supposed to go see you guys this summer, but the boys – Summer camps opened up for them, so the boys are going to go to summer camps uh, so they can get some, like, normality back in life. So we had to cut our four-week West Coast trip and do something else. So all kinds of stuff to go. Oh, and Joanna, yes, Mexico and South America, both fantastic places to go. Um, I Near and dear to my heart, I've done lots of videos in South America, and people will get upset with me, like, why do you only have Europe? I'm like, we actually have lots of South America videos, but you're not watching South America videos. You're watching Europe videos, so that's why I show up. They don't show you the South American ones. So if you're going to go, we got videos in Ecuador, Peru, Uruguay, Argentina, Brazil. So we got stuff to help people out going to South America, so you do that. So, Ron, do you use credit card travel points when booking flights or hotels? Um, I use the, I have a Delta Amex card that I use and because I use that, it gives me points. So I get free upgrades and free flights. And I, I use those. I usually use the free flights, um, for the kids. Uh, so they, they can go cause then I book myself. So the tickets under my name and since I've got like the higher status. So then we get an upgrade. So I'll do that. So I saw it just jump by Thai food. Yes, 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 yes. Thai food is fantastic. Um, I do not speak any Thai, sadly. Um, I think I did actually put a thank you in Thai, maybe. 
uh, on here, so you can let me know. <laughs> but uh, I'm pretty sure I picked that. But no, I love Thai food, um, but I do not speak any Thai. But a friend of mine told me Thai is relatively easy to learn. So if we go there, I'm sure I'll learn a few words for sure. So let's see. Phantom of Darkness, favorite Canadian city. My favorite Canadian city, Quebec City. It is the most European city in North America. And really, you go there and you're like, wow, where am I? And it's fantastic food, uh, good experience, lots of buskers there. So like, you know, street performers and stuff. So that's fantastic to see. Um, so that that would be my go-to Canadian city. Um, number two would be Toronto. Um, and then probably number three, Kingston. I was surprised. Kingston, I wish I would have stayed more time there. I didn't make any videos when we were there. So I was surprised, surprised like, because we, we were driving through, like, oh, let's stop here for the day. So old capital. So we stopped and we were like, this is really awesome. And then, you know, I never made any videos because we were just enjoying the town. So I feel bad. So I got to go back there. Let's see. Gabe asked, do you recommend renting a car to get around Turkey and the Balkans? Hmm. You can do it. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't do it for Turkey. I mean, I would stick to public transportation, probably easier to get around. It depends how comfortable you feel driving. So there is that. Oh, thank you, Joanna Hayden, for the super chat. I appreciate it. Those you know, the super chats help keep us going, help us make honest travel videos. Same thing with the members and patrons. Uh, it does make a difference. It helps us support us because – being honest, not every sponsor wants to work with honesty, so we don't do too many sponsored anything. That's why you don't see a lot of us um, selling stuff um, in our videos. So not that we wouldn't if it's something we believe in, but uh, it is something there. Let's see. Let's see. Do, 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 do. So I will say, in terms of the questions that are on here, I'm not going to go into, like, Variants of, of COVID and things like that. I'm going to try to stick to more positive travel kind of questions. So we're going to do that. Um, so I want to just just mention that. So don't feel upset if I, it seems like I'm I'm skipping out on things. Uh, here's one, Leah Luck. What African country do you suggest going to for a new traveler? Rwanda and Tanzania uh, would be two places in East Africa. I highly recommend. Super friendly people. Good tourism infrastructure. Rwanda is super safe. Uh, Tanzania is a pretty safe place to get to too. And you got so much to see the Serengeti is in Tanzania, Rwanda. You can go with the gorillas and hike the gorillas to see that. Um, those are two I really recommend if you're going into like North Africa. I really liked Tunisia when I was there. Uh, not a lot of tourists are going there. Um, but I went before the Arab spring years ago. So this is, you know, things have changed, but I know we were in Morocco, had a good time there. Uh, so those would be some ones I would, I would really recommend. Let's see. Come on, you wolves. Favorite U.S. national park. So favorite national park. Let's see. So we've been to quite a few. Acadia in Maine and probably the Grand Tetons in Wyoming uh, are my two favorite ones, I would say. So there is that. Uh, Pineapple Prize. I have not been to um, Algeria. So Anyway. All right. So. My lovely and talented assistant is about to join us, and we're going to talk a bit about um, some family travel stuff. But I also wanted to go into the European openings and the UK. So for those of you who don't know, this is my mom. Hello. This is my mom, Hi. Kathy. Um, <laughs> Brian Smith Law, what have I missed? So we're gonna start talking about what we missed beforehand. Uh, so we'll so we'll we'll go to talk about some of those. I'll review that and we'll go from there. Anil, <laughs> totally forgot about the live. Hey, I appreciate you being on here and thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, we had our our members and patrons one at seven, and then we decided to do a live one as well for, for everybody because there's so many questions coming on. Uh, Stuart Ross is off to bed, but uh, wanted to want to at least be here for for to say hi to some people. So anyway. Monica says, happy Mother's Day to you, Mom. Thank you. So now what I want to kind of talk about uh, real quick before we get into the, the family trips and stuff like that um, is so Europe, they had the conversation. Some of you have seen our video about Europe being open for the summer. The thing is not all of Europe is going to be open this summer. 
Okay, it's going to depend on the country because every country can set their own rules and restrictions. So you might have to test before you come. You might have to test, you know, proof of vaccine and test. And some people might still make you quarantine. So whatever your home country has you do does not mean that's what another country will do. And just because Greece does one thing, because Greece, if you're vaccinated, come on down. Test negative, come on down. Other countries might not be that way. And from, from what I've been seeing, it seems like more countries that are more tourism dependent are the ones that are going to be more open to letting people in, have a little bit more, you know, easier ways for tourists to get into, um, get in and to visit. Um, I know this week the UK government uh, came out with their list of countries based on color. Um, it's a color coded thing, so if it's a green country, you know, don't have to, you don't have. It's basically go ahead, and it'll be fine when you come back. Uh, there's not a lot of countries on that list. I know Portugal was on there, so I expect pretty much all of the UK to be in Portugal this summer. So it'll be it'll be a great time to hey, if you want to get your Walter's World, you know, Britain shirt, you can pick up your Union Jack Walter's World shirt at uh, Walter'sWorld.store, and you can have it fit in just fine in the Algarve for sure. Um, but I just want you to realize is things will open up at different times. I had a lot of people when that announcement came out said, I'm buying my tickets right now to go next week. I'm like, no, no, it's not open yet. Remember, Germany, their hotels still aren't open. They're, they're closed. Okay. And other places, it's restricted. Some places, we have friends in Italy, they still can't leave their town. Places in Ireland, you know, they were, you know, can go three miles from their house. So you really have to kind of, you know, be ready to be prepared to be to be kind of interrupted in your travels. Okay. But right now, um, like Kirk says, uh, Croatia is open with proof of vaccine. So Croatia, it's funny because Croatia, Greece, and Iceland are open to travel to now. And they actually Delta and United all have flights going there. So, so there is that. So Fortune's Covey says, yeah, I have a ticket for the UK from June 2020. Thanks, Delta. I was able to keep moving my dates, hoping you'll also be on the green list by August since it's Amber now. Yeah, you just want to see, you just want to keep updated because things change. They're going to update it every month or sometimes weekly. We'll have to see how it is. And you'll get to see where you can go and, and all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> Jordan. Hi, Mark from Valencia, Spain. Hidden gem. Love the place. I took students there a few years ago. Everybody had a great time. Well, we welcome you guys anywhere else in Spain you haven't yet visited would like to go. Uh, the, that I haven't visited yet is basically the Basque country is, is the last mm -hmm. part of Spain I haven't got to. Because luckily, when I lived in Portugal, um, I spent a lot of time going to Spain on trips. I, my parents and I went to Spain a number of times as well. I've taken student groups to Madrid, uh, Segovia, um, Cuenca, Valencia, Barcelona. Uh, we, were supposed to, we were supposed to go to, uh, the, um, to the Basque country, but that got canceled because this pandemic thing. So, so fun stuff will be coming. Um, yeah. So one thing I think is important is as we all haven't been able to travel for a year you know, internationally, it's good to remember some of the good times we've had, the good trips we've had with our moms as it is Mother's Day yesterday in the U.S. And I'm here celebrating with my mom. And so uh, I know for me, a really great trip that we took together. We've taken a lot of really great trips together, but whether it's been, you know, our first international foray when she came to visit me when I was an exchange student in Finland, and we went to Finland, Sweden, Norway, and my mom makes friends uh, around uh, in Norway with some lady, and we end up going, she goes to her house, and we go to parties with all these Norwegians, and uh, had a good time, it was St. Patrick's Day, I think, it was and we, yeah, we were invited to this Irish pub with them, and, and we've had some really great experiences, I think we've been to about 40 countries together, uh, I had a number of trips around the world, but uh, what's cool is as you get older, going on these trips as a family, it helps you bond closer together. Cause you know, like when you're a kid and a parent, you know, for those of you who have older kids, you know, like oh, about 24, 25, we become more friendly and, and we can have normal stuff. And that's how we were. It's like, oh, that's, you started coming to Germany when I lived there and our, our friend, our friendship just grew. <laughs> so, but that, that's one of the good things. Um, but you know, what are, what are some of your good memories of our trips? Good memories. Well, going to Germany the first time mm -hmm. and uh, staying at the Park Inn and being right down there in the center, going to the grocery store that had everything conceivable. Oh yeah, kind of yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the windows there at the uh, at the department store that were fabulous. Yeah. Uh, that was a great trip. And then um, just 
I mean, that was really the, the first really big one, I think. Well, we'll see. Well, because yeah. well, they, so my parents, my, the, my parents traveled a lot for work when I was a kid. So they travel around the U.S. My dad tr worked in Mexico and Korea. So there wasn't a lot. They You went on like a school trip and then you yeah. went with some friends to like a U.K. road trip or something. Yeah, we did Ireland and yeah. uh, England and Scotland. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we did Russia with on a cruise. And we'd also been to uh, South and Central America on a cruise way back when. Um, yes, about nine months before I was born. So am I Colombian or Venezuelan? Uh, well, you're not Venezuelan. Colombian. I'm Colombian. Colombian. So fun fact, fun fact right there. T. TMI. So sorry about that. Oh, we have a super chat here real quick. Uh, oh, where'd it go? Just lost it. Um, doo -doo -doo. So... Ibneza, fingers crossed for Bastille Day in Paris. Do you have any suggestion that's not the parade? So I've actually been to Bastille Day in Paris with my brother, and we stayed at the Eiffel Tower and watched the fireworks there, and the whole park was full of people. I was just years ago before all the super security stuff, but it was a cool experience. Um, it, not as dangerous with the fireworks as I thought it was going to be because the real dangerous fireworks time is actually New Year's Eve. If you're walking on the Champs Elysees, mm -hmm. watch out for the fireworks. Um, but yeah, no, you have a, you have a good time with the fireworks. People are out, just happy. Uh, enjoying life. I mean, who knows what it's going to be like this year, but it's a, it's a really, really good time. Uh, so uh, I'm glad you're going to, I hope you get to go. Um, I think you should be able to go. Um, Cause I know France says uh, from June 3rd, they're, they're going to open up, but again, you got to keep on track of what's going on. Uh, that's what's really tough sometimes. Hey, Terry Finley. I see Terry Finley's on here. Um, but, uh, and thank you very much for the super chat. It does make a difference. So um now, I know some other things with, with Mother's Day, you know, sometimes you're not sure what to get mom, right? And so a trip is always a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you can do that, go, go, go on a trip with mom. But I think one thing that can be nice is when you, when you think of a trip to go with your mom, a lot of times it happens when people go with family. It's like one person kind of controls the trip and decides what everybody's going to do. And that can lead to some tension. So one thing is like my mom and I, we've been talking, we, we talk about our trips. Mom's like, well, I want to go to France. And I want to see that. I want to go, okay, I want to go to Germany. Okay, what, what can we do? And you want to kind of balance things out because you need to have time for your own stuff as well. Because as much as my mom and I love each other and we're the bestest of buddies, sometimes my mom gets annoyed by me because I just love her so much. She's like, that's enough love. Okay. <laughs> sometimes he's had it with me yeah, yeah. And, and that's normal and if you're going to go travel with your parents especially as you get older everyone kind of like when you're younger like you you know mom says dad says when you're older like hey i got my own thing i have my own house i have my own stuff so what my, my parents and i do when we travel is we actually plan in free time from each other so yeah. we'll have we'll have like okay after like four days we're like okay so I know you want to go to this shop like you know like my mom likes folk museums i know she likes and i do too so no problem but Let's say I didn't like folk museums. I'm like, mom, I know you like folk museums. Here's one that you might want to check out that I'm not really interested in. And that gives us, you know, six hours away from each other. So we come back and love each other again. And, you know, I'll do that and I'll take my dad. You're welcome. <laughs> Sometimes she'll take the kids. Thank you. Uh, so we have that. So it is fun. Oh, Missy, we have a new member. Thank you very much for becoming a member on YouTube. Uh, we really appreciate it. It makes all the difference in the world. Uh, we have a... Facebook group, uh, the superheroes of Walter's World and travel. So uh, there, if you look on the community tab on our YouTube channel, there's some things that are just for members. There's a new one up that talks about our life we just had earlier today for members only. Comment on there and we'll get you on to uh, to the stuff. So, oh, sorry, mom, I've got to answer this question. Who's got a better Hoxham? Hopper House or Hoxham Bella? Um, I'm going to have to say Hoxenbella uh, or Hoxen House has a better one. I mean, Hopper House is nice. Don't get me wrong. But um, actually, if you end up in Bamberg and you get Schäufle, Schäufle is even better. But you don't get it everywhere. But Schäufle is like top-notch stuff. Oh, my, another member. Michelle Forbes, thank you so much for becoming a member. Same thing. Look on the members only feed. Uh, there'll, there'll be some, some thing there. You can contact me and email me. We'll get you in the group. So it'll be good. Oh, Chris looking at, a 
Caledonian Canal Cruise. So Canal <laughs> Cruises can be actually really fun. I know you've done river cruises. You well, want to talk about? Well, and kind of when we were in Russia, it was kind of a canal uh, cruise. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we stopped along the way at some really neat places, and you can get off the boat and get back on, so that's very convenient. Yeah. Um, and everything's right there. Yeah, and the, and the canal cruises, usually in smaller boats, so there's less people to cause problems. That's one thing I think riverboat cruising is better than, yeah. like, big old Mediterranean cruises or, like, Caribbean yeah. cruises where you got thousands of people. Yeah. A thousand people means a thousand problems. Yeah. Riverboats, smaller, easier to get to back to, so that's a, a lot simpler yeah, kind of we've, thing we've gone on uh cruises with probably two thousand people and 30 people yeah well, 31 was a lot more enjoyable it was mm -hmm. it was and we knew everybody um uh, you know it was just easier to get around there was a little room for some flexibility um so yeah. that was much nicer than all yeah, because because when you get the, it really goes to smaller number of people, smaller number of problems. Because I've been on cruises where they're literally like we're waving at people as they left behind, and it just it can be a bit much. So it's something to kind of think about. And and if you're looking at multi generational travel, sometimes cruises are pretty good or all inclusive because they usually have stuff for everybody. Uh, so something else to consider there. Oh, we've got another member. Thank you so much, Multi Burgundy. Thank you for going to YouTube member. We really appreciate it. that. It's awesome. There's information. Community tab, just look for the, uh, there's one that was just for members only. We'll be there. Mary Ellen, I don't know. Mary, aren't you already a patron? Yeah, so wish the membership button was showing up on my YouTube screen. You might be in a country that doesn't have it, Mary Ellen. That would be the why. The join button might not be showing up. So so there is that. Um, let's see. Oh, Terry, I'm sorry. May your mom's memory be eternal and your dad's as well. That's sad. I'm sorry. Anyway, sorry, I don't want to, let's see. I want to go to a travel question to get my mind off that, but because Terry's a good friend of ours and uh, memory and family members near days like Mother's Day can always be tough. So Alex Christmas, great name, by the way, uh, is three days enough visiting London for the first time? Yeah, if you only have a three-day weekend, you can get a lot of the main sites. Um, what I would recommend is make sure you know what day the change of the guard is so you can see that. Go to the British Museum. It's free. Uh, don't waste your time on things like Madame Tussauds because it's too expensive. Um, you can go what, if you have to choose Churchill. between St. Paul, St. Paul's Cathedral, and Westminster Abbey. Do Westminster Abbey more historic. I, I prefer it. It's also near to doing stuff. Uh, yeah, the you can see Churchill. the Churchill's War Rooms is pretty good. Worth worth spending the money for because stuff's either free in London or stupid expensive. So you can make some choices there. So hopefully that can help. Um, yeah, and as as Liz from Means to Travel, nice channel. You can go check them out, Means to Travel. Uh, she has all kinds of advice on packing and traveling and business travel and stuff. She can help you out. And they're doing all kinds of travel around the U.S. right now with her husband, Derek. Um, good people. And they got some stuff there to help out. So, oh, I clicked on the wrong one. She had another comment. <laughs> Sorry. Alex Christmas, you won't be able to see everything, but you can see a lot of the top sites. Yeah, for when you're there. So Josh Hernandez, if Jocelyn was here, she'd be hitting me right now. Josh asks, are you big on camping? If so, do some videos involving national parks. So I do have a video on the don'ts of national parks. I've got a video on the don'ts of Grand Tetons. Uh, don'ts of Yellowstone is going to be coming out in a couple weeks. Um, so I do have those involving national parks. So we got some stuff there. I'm not big on camping because whenever I camp, my back ends up hurting so bad that I'm basically out of commission for a week. So I've kind of moved on a bit from that one so yes let's see oh did i miss somebody no all right yes okay so i think um some other things we kind of want to talk about is looking at because i know some people are talking about uh greece and france and iceland and other places that are opening up also i think it's important a lot of people are still going to be traveling domestically this year i know on our channel we're back, like the views are back to basically 2019 numbers where they've been down 60, 70% for the last year. They've all, it's all come back and people are really going to decide to travel. And I think if you're thinking that things won't be busy this summer, you're, you're wrong. Um, I was at Atlanta last week. Uh, no, I was in Atlanta. What, when I get back, when we come here? You came here on Friday? Yeah. So I got back Thursday night. Atlanta was packed. You wouldn't even know there was a pandemic or anything. There's no seats saved. There was nothing like that. It was packed. 
And that's all over the place. We have friends of ours, Mark and Terry. They were just in Denver this morning. It's like you couldn't tell the difference. Uh, so there's uh, there's a lot of stuff out there. So, so just know it's going to be busy. So you do need to pack or not pack. You do need to prepare. Booking accommodation now. Don't wait. Forget what you're going to do and book the accommodation because you might see that booking accommodation might mean that, you know what, it's not worth it for that cheap flight because accommodation is so expensive right now. So make sure you're, you're, you're checking out and you got to pre-book as much as you can just to save time because not everything's going to be hundred percent open like restaurants. You got to book those restaurants no matter what, um, just to be, just to be there for you. Okay. But Rodolfo's tech channel. So Rodolfo and I've been chatting. It's on Instagram. Rodolfo, we've been chatting. Um, so thank you very much for the super chat, my friend. I appreciate it. Let's see. So Ray was in New York City last week and surprisingly seems sparse. I've heard that with New York. Uh, our buddy Thomas, he was just there. He said the same thing. So where is that? Oh, wait. Things. So where I'm, where I'm clicking to have these things pop up is moving so fast that I'm missing people's stuff, so I apologize. Um, so hi, Ann Silver. Good to see you. Uh, hi, Italy. Oh, I wish I could see how Italy. Do you think we'll be able to go this year, able to travel between regions? It's our first trip there. September doable before the storm travel 2022 will bring. So right now, like our buddies in Northern Italy can't leave their town. But Italy has said that they plan, plan to be open from after June 30th. So summertime, July, August. But my friends have had to push their wedding back from 2020 to 2021. I had to push it down to back to 2022. So more information is going to be needed. Um, and, but I think that's going to come soon. It's like if they really are opening in July, they'll be, they should be open in September because if they have to shut back down, that means something else really bad happened and we're all going to be shut down again. So, so fingers crossed. I know we ended up, we're doing a, a France trip and they said the same thing. We'll be open from July 30th. But again, they're just saying that there's no official stuff and things can change. So it, it, it is tough. But, and also, and another thing I think people are, I mean, travel has come almost all the way back this last week in domestic travel in the U.S. 2022, will travel be all the way back in international, which is a lot more expensive and a lot of people haven't had jobs and, and stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, it'll come back. It'll jump back. But a huge jump, I mean, when it's fallen so far, if it was here in the fall this far, that huge jump up to here is still less than what we were seeing in 2019. So so don't be, don't be scared off for the 2022. If you need to push it back, just know that there is that. Harry, I can tell you want us to go to Thailand. We will go, my friend. We will go there. Okay, Christian, Mark, any suggestions on trying with two to five year olds, deal with maps, et cetera? All right, so Jocelyn, uh, I have a lot of, if, there, if you go on our playlist, there's actually a Traveling with Children playlist uh, on our channel. And Jocelyn and I have videos that go through a lot of this stuff. So two to five year olds, these are the active ones. They're the, I'm going to play, you know, I, I need my time and I'm going to crash hard and I'm going to have a horrible, you know, fit if I don't get my, my nap in. What you need to do, you can't over plan. You can't take a trip with two and five year olds like you're 25 when you're seeing nine, nine countries in five days. Plan an activity in the morning, an activity in the afternoon, in the middle, Make sure you're finding where parks are, where they can play and swing. Actually, some of our best memories with traveling with the kids or the kids play. Remember Freiburg on that mm -hmm. big swing yeah, and stuff? And that. Liam learned how to walk uh, in Paris, just in the park there. Schedule park time. Okay. And let's say you're going on, if you're going on a 10 day trip, you know, do your, your four days, then have one day that's just kid day. If they just want to stay in the hotel and you just want to do that and watch cartoons, do it because giving them that makes the next five days easy. Cause we're like, Oh, this is your day. You wanted to do this. You might get upset. You're like, oh, I'm wasting my time on this vacation watching cartoons, but you know what? It's going to make it easier for them to enjoy the rest of it. And they're not going to be, cause little kids can't go, go, go. Like you think decent stroller can help, but there is that. Oh, Henry Martinez. What's up, buddy. Thank you very much for the super chat. Hi, Mark. And Mrs. Walters. How are you guys doing today? We're doing well. Is Jocelyn joining later? I just thought I'd say hi. Jocelyn is home with Caleb for some Mother Day time, Mother's Day time together. So Joc Jocelyn will not be on here. She there's obviously she hasn't even on the in the comment section because she's uh, enjoying some time with Mr. Caleb. So good to see you, Henry. Good to see you, buddy. Evan Felice Felic Felicetti Felicetti. Sorry, Evan, if I'm screwing up your name, man. My bad. Hey, Mark, love the channel. Thank you very much. Road tripping this summer from Portland to Seattle. Can't wait. Hope all is well. 
Nice. You have a fun trip there. There's some really beautiful stuff. You're going to go along the coast. You're going to do like the go in, land, and then go up and do that. You can, you can see some fun stuff, man. I'll, you have a good time. We have some videos on road trip advice, um, but I think you'll be good. You'll be good. Um, so here's one. Jer Bear, is there any news on whether or not the U.S. will have vaccine passports? My college semester just ended, and I have the worst cabin fever ever. I'd love to go to Europe. So – and there was a question earlier about your vaccination cards. Look, always have your vaccination cards if you're going to travel just in case people ask for stuff. But there's going to be some kind of verification system eventually uh, just to make sure so it's not like fake cards or whatever. I know in my state where it is, if you get vaccinated, you go on their list of vaccinated people. So there might be something there. But it's something you got to think about in terms of do I want to carry it with me? So what we did is when we got our shot, well, my mom did, but what I did is I took my international WHO CDC vaccine stuff. We actually have a video on it. If you look on our shorts, on our short shelf, there's a video about taking your yellow vaccine booklet with you. And you can actually go to the WHO website and print off the page that they'll stamp and sign. So that'll count. So you can have that. So I have mine on two different forms uh, to do that. Um, but the thing is, Jeremy, there's places you can already go. Iceland, Greece, and Croatia are open to Americans right now. But you want to do Europe? So, so there is that without um, a lot of stuff going on. So just a heads up, and thank you very much for the question. And for all of you that are sending questions, because there's so many questions going by, I'm sorry we're not getting to all of them. Um, post them again. Feel free. Uh, we'll, we will answer them as we can. Um, but I just want to let you know there are <laughs> – sometimes it just gets a little crazy. <laughs> Up on here. Question about Estonia, Lithuania, and Latvia. I understand. Yeah, well, six days be enough. I think she is. Six days. Okay, so six days. Um, hmm. I think that. So, okay, if the question was six days enough for Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, not really. But if you're driving, if you're driving yourself, you can hit the main sites. Uh, if you fly into Estonia, you do Estonia, or you're sorry, you fly to Tallinn. And you go there, you know, a couple of days in Tallinn, and from there you can go to the islands, come down through Tartu on the way out, going south into Riga. Riga is really the only big thing to see in in Latvia. There's Segulda, which yeah. has got some castle ruins. You can see we saw that. You can go there. Then you can go down into the hill of crosses. Then you go to the beaches of Palanga and Klaipeda, and then go over to Vilnius, or just go to Vilnius from Riga. Yeah. Uh, you, you can do it in six days if that's all you have. Um, so it, it is doable, but. Um, yeah, Where just 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 heads up for that. Where do I want to go for the first time? Where does Kathy want to travel for the first time? We haven't gone yet, Mom. Where would you like to go? Um, I'd like to go to Egypt, Turkey, uh, Ethiopia, um, Chile, Bolivia. All places we'll be getting to, so it'll be great. Cool. Parts random. Thank you very much for the super chat. Best place to visit in Japan, assuming I have – okay, if you only have one week, it's going to be very easy. I uh, hope to go there with my son. He is studying Japanese in high school. Once it opens back up, have a beer on me. Thank you so much. I will. I promise. I'll Actually, I want to refill my whiskey in your honor, <laughs> parts. Right? I'm sorry. I know it's not, I know it's not beer, but uh, I'm going to make it a little strong one. A little strong one for you. I appreciate it. Uh, okay, so if you only have a, if you only have a week, I would just do Tokyo and Kyoto, and it's going to sound weird because Tokyo is huge and Kyoto's a lot. It's still big, but it's smaller. I would split it in the middle between the two, because J Tokyo has. I mean, it's got historic stuff to see when you're there, but it has all kinds of the new tech. Like, oh my gosh, I'm like in a futuristic world when I'm in Tokyo. But Kyoto gives you that historic Japan. And so many UNESCO World Heritage Sites there. I mean, it's just a fantastic, fantastic uh, place to go. But the thing is, you can take the fast train from there. You can get your JR Rail Pass um, and go. Um, you can do. You know, you can do over Osaka too um, when you're when you're there too. If you want to throw on another day trip or a day trip to Mount Fuji, if you want. But honestly, I would split it between those two. If you're coming from the U.S., um, one thing you have to realize is you're going to be about 10 to 12 hour time difference depending where you are in the U.S. And you will get really messed up with the time. So find some stuff to help you adjust. So start adjusting beforehand. 12 hours is really tough to adjust uh, with the uh, – or 10 hours is really tough to adjust with the time change. But just get up and go the first day. Like go until bedtime because otherwise you'll be so messed up for the entire week you're there because of a bad first day. Um, let's see. When you're going to be staying there, finding a place to stay 
uh, it's going to be pricey to stay, but it's worth getting in place. You want to have like a, a Western style bed. We've slept on the floor when we were there and in futons and stuff. So depending how your back is, I'm sure your high school son will be fine because I remember in high school, you could sleep on anything and be fine. But I know as, as we get more mature, it can be more difficult. So yeah. I hope that helps you helps you out parts random. And thank you very much for the super chat. Really super appreciate it. So let's see. Scroll down. Oh, Hans Christensen, best former Soviet countries to visit. So do you mean the Soviet Union or the Warsaw Pact? I'm going to go with the Soviet Union. Russia, because of its size and the number of things to see there is obviously going to be number one. Um, if I'm going to go in the Baltics, I would say the city to see is Tallinn is the best city to visit. Riga is the most fun city to visit, but Tallinn is probably the best city to visit there. Uh, Ukraine's got a lot of stuff, but right now with all the stuff going on in Ukraine, I, I wouldn't really recommend going there. Uh, those would be would be my top ones for you. So thanks for the question. Oh, is Simply Jocelyn in the house? Oh, look. Simply Jocelyn. So for those of you that don't know, that that's my mom and that is my wife. So you can go to her channel, Simply Jocelyn. She puts out drink videos every Friday and she's got some travel food videos. So you want to know what to eat in Montana or other places. She's got videos talking about that. So you can check it out. Gadoo, go subscribe or go check out her videos. She's amazing. I love her so much. Um, but I don't know what her questions were before. I did not see her things popping up. So I apologize. I'm um, guessing my phone just buzzed. So it was probably her. All right. So some other stuff we should probably talk about. Um, so what are some issues? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking at some of these questions and I'm missing the, the thing. So Derek puts it really well. Everyone, don't forget to smash the like button. Please do hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Um, and if you got questions, please, please, please keep posting them. I know we missed some of them and you think we're skipping. I'm not. It's just we can't get to all of them as they come. So if you show up, you post them again, it's totally fine. Um, so, so don't worry. Okay. Excuse uh, me. Now, in terms of some of the popular spots, I think you're going to see this summer in the U.S. Like last summer, you had the national parks were just overrun. The national parks where when we were at Yellowstone, we were talking to people there, and they said that they were having summer numbers into October. Like usually, we're you know by by first of September, we're, our numbers are way down. They had it going all the way through because so many people were working from home or traveling at those times, or they're just doing the U.S. things. But it was really hard to get reservations for place. So if you're going to be doing national parks, like watch this, open up another tab and book your accommodation now uh, because it can be can be something else, okay? <laughs> Susan Murray, Mark, be careful not to knock over some of that fine china. I will do my best. <laughs> there, there, There's about three feet behind us. So I won't reach too we're, far. We're far enough. See, like, like, I can barely see. Now I'm touching it. I'm not. And my mom, look at her face. She's like, don't touch it. Don't worry. I learned long ago not to touch the china. So I'm a good boy. Uh, let's see. Missy, should I visit Copenhagen or Stockholm? Both. They are both really cool cities. You can actually do both. Um, that's not a problem. But if you're going to choose between the two of them, I would probably go with Stockholm over Copenhagen. Not that I don't like so Copenhagen. I've, I've taken students to Stockholm and Copenhagen, and the students love both of them. But I think the students were more surprised how much they like Copenhagen more than they were surprised how much they like Stockholm. But I just think with the amount of things you can do when you're there and the outdoor activities, you can't miss it. You can't go wrong with either of them. Yeah. To be honest, you just can't go wrong. Oh, Laura. Happy birthday. I will have a drink for you. Ooh, I poured a little bit much in that one. Okay. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, Laura. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> okay. Come on, you wolves. Six days in the Czech Republic. Uh, okay, so you got six days. That's, oh, man, you're going to have to choose. Okay, so I would do obviously Prague, Chesky Krumlov. And maybe a day trip to Pilsen to see the brewery and do that. I mean, 
and that's going to be pushing it because Chester Krimlov, there's no like easy way to get there because mm-hmm. it's like a train bus thing, but it's so pretty small town. Well worth it. Um, that would be my, uh, that would be my, my advice to you on that, but it is doable if you only have, cause that's the thing is some people are like, Oh, there's so much to see in a country. You need months to see it. You're right. But sometimes you only have five days. You only have six days. So what should you see in those six days? Prague, Chesky Krimlov, and then maybe a day to Brno. Uh, you can see Brno. That's also kind of cool. They have mummies there in a cool church. Um, and that's on a train line that's only like an hour and a half. Um, so you could do Brno and Chesky Krimlov. That could be doable. So you got, you got options. There is options. Um, Darian asked me, <clears throat> Walter's World, have you ever been to Belarus? I have been to Belarus, and it was a crazy experience. I went with a friend of mine, and two girls just happened to meet us on the square and say, oh, we'll show you around every day. And we're like, no, it's fine, but thank you. And every day when we would come out of the hotel, they'd be right there. Oh, we just had to be here. Let us show you more stuff. And one of them was like, the West is taking our people and, and Lukashenko is the greatest man ever and you are all wrong. I'm like, I don't want you even around us. What the heck? And it was just like propaganda people telling us stuff. It was crazy. And I had, I used to teach in Lithuania and I had a lot of Belarusian students that um, they're from Belarus and they were telling me stories about life back there. And it was, it was very interesting because when we would take, we took the bus in from Vilnius to, to Minsk, like all the, all the houses on the road were like totally nicely painted. So it looked really nice. But if you actually like, we got out at one of our stops and I like literally walk like half a block down, just look down the street. You could tell that the rest of the houses weren't painted and done up. Right. I'm like, Hey, get back here. I'm like, Hey, I'm coming back. I don't want to get in trouble in Belarus. So, uh, so there is, there is an interesting thing for that. Ah, Noir, I'm studying abroad in Spain soon. Awesome. Study abroad. I don't I don't think my university is letting students go next semester. I'm hoping to run programs in 2022, but I'm glad you get to go. Any suggestion or recommendation for cheap European countries to visit as a student? So you're in Spain, so you're lucky because Vueling, V-U-E-L-I-N-G, is an airline, a cheap airline that's based out of Spain. It's from Iberia. I use them. They're fine. Uh, you can go all over Europe because all of Europe wants to come to Spain. So you have plenty of options. Uh, your cheap options for places to go, Portugal, uh, well, obviously Spain, Greece, um, Italy can be cheap, uh, and Eastern Europe. Anything Eastern Europe, you'll be able to save. You'll be able to do cash with fine. Just think of this way. Germany and north, the, the, the prices go north, okay? But what's cool is when you're there, make sure you get an international student card. So when you go around, you have like your student card and you can get discounts on lots of stuff because Europe is really good for discounts for for seniors, for students, for teachers. I mean, it's like I wish we had such good stuff. Oh, Joseph. I am hashtag jelly of you. Joseph's going to Greece in 48 days. Do you think everything will be somewhat normal? Nothing will be normal. I don't want anyone to think anything's going to be normal. It's got, it's like now, wherever you live now, you know there's things going on. It's going to be there. But tourist and stuff is going to be open, so you'll be able to enjoy. So it's going to be as normal as it can be. Uh, so I think that's kind of cool. So. Joe is moving. Where's that? Where's that one? The bottom. Right there. Okay. Oh, dang it. Joe Ness, sorry. Walter's World, I'm moving to Germany after graduation. Any advice for moving to Germany? <laughs> Having moved to Germany after graduation myself, um, so getting cable and internet sucks just like everywhere. Getting things signed up sucks. Make sure you have everything officially stamped. Anything you need from the U.S., whether it is like your, if you have to work and you need your your diploma, it can't just be a scan of your diploma. It's got to be official stamp thing. Stumpf, stumpf, stumpf. It has to have a stamp or it won't be real. It will really get really, really annoying. Just letting you know. Um, you're gonna have, when you wherever, wherever you move to, you have to register at the local police department, and they will give you a piece of paper that proves you live there. And you're gonna need that to buy like a phone. At least you used to, like proof of residence stuff. So you'll get that. But you'll get your um, residence card relatively quickly when you're there. I mean, with COVID, I don't know how things are going right now, but there is that. As all the hotels are closed right now, um, it's gonna be tough finding a place to go. So make sure you talk or however you're going over there, uh, what your situation is. Okay. Katie. Hello, Katie. Good to see you. I'm late to the party. What is it that you teach that allows your students to travel so many places? So I teach marketing. And what I do is usually once a year, I will take, you know, like a 10 to 14 day trip with students in like during the winter break. And we'll go to a couple countries and we'll go visit companies and we'll like, 
do a dance class, a wine tour, so they get to learn about the culture and the history and the business of that country, so they have a better idea of what's there. And then usually in the summers, I'll do a four-week course. Like I've taught at the at one of the universities in Vienna three years, um, and well, I'll teach a marketing course, like basics of marketing or social media marketing or something like that. So, so there is that. Ah, my friend Derek. So Derek and I, uh, he hasn't answered me yet, but Derek and I are going to make some videos together on business travel advice. So uh, Derek, just just in case you were wondering, you will. Uh, surprise. Uh, anyway, so Mar Derek says, Mark, have you looked at the one euro houses in Italy before? I kind of went down a rabbit hole the other day and now I'm obsessed. So for those of you who don't know, there's, there's towns in Italy that will literally, you can buy a house for one euro. Of course, the house is probably not in great shape and it'll cost you a lot more than one euro to get it back to living order. But their thought is if we can bring people back to these villages, Maybe we can save these villages, bring young people there, you know, digital nomads or whatever. I mean, think about it today. You don't have to be stuck living in a big city with horrible traffic because if you can do, you know, you know, work from the computers, you can live anywhere and you can live I and mean, think about it. What you can get. I mean, I have friends that live in New York and they have a studio apartment that is more than my house. And we have a house and everyone has their own bedroom, not one bedroom for four people. Everybody has their own bedroom. Actually, our house is less. So you can see how that could be appealing. Um, I have actually thought about those things. Like, that's kind of cool. Um, but since I have to teach in person, I haven't gone down the rabbit hole so much. Maybe one day, but uh, not yet. Oh, Derek says he did text me back, but I don't have my phone because that would be rude to be checking my phone while I'm on a live chat. Rude. Liz needs to teach you some manners. Just saying. Uh, let's see. <laughs> so chicken marsala and now i'm hungry thanks <laughs> any countries you would never want to go to so for me my only my, my thing about no travel is it's it's just war zones i will not go to a war zone i will not fly near a war zone i do not want to take a chance with that um that that's my thing so people are like go to north korea no i'm not going to go there i'm not going to go someplace like that but if things change yeah i'd go i'm open to anywhere in the world because there's great people everywhere in the world but it's basically war zone stuff is where we draw the line. Ah, uh, yes. John Newbakes, what would you see in Mexico City if you had a week? Um, I will have to tell you when I go there later this year, and I will let you know all the places we're going to go. So there's a lot of stuff. That is one city. I'm going there with my buddy Jeff, um, and we're going to go check it out. So uh, I'm excited to go. I've done a, I, more research will be coming, so I, I just, just make me smile thinking about that trip. Um, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. So, Fabio Prado, have you ever been to South Africa? So we have not been. We actually were looking at it, and that, but we ended up going to Rwanda, Tanzania, which was a fantastic experience. We loved it. My dad will tell you that and his trip to China were his two favorite trips he's ever taken. Um, and it was amazing. So South Africa, we have friends down there. So we were looking uh, to go for, was it spring break this year? Uh, we were going to fly. It's a long flight, but we're going to go down there for a while. But obviously with COVID, that did not happen. So that all fell through. A lot of our international stuff, like we kind of plan, like my mom and I, we'll talk about places we want to go, right? And so we're like, okay, let's think about overall, where do we need to go? When, what time of the year? When do we have time? Like we have some rough ideas. And so we'll plan out um destinations and so we kind of had everything like we had 2020 was you know pinned in excuse me 20 21 was like an erasable pin and then 2022 was like penciled in right and then everything got messed up with covid and all this kind of thing so it was kind of like almost like a house of cards and this is this year's that was all falling down so it's kind of like whatever comes comes so we'll have that um let's see Lori, Riga has been added to my wish list. Yeah, Riga, I had many fun times because Riga for me, when I lived in Lithuania, I lived three and a half years in Lithuania, and we'd go to Riga for weekends every so often. Um, always, always had a good time when I was there. Though, when I went with my buddy Dave, we were there uh, in like December, and it was freezing cold, and we went up the church tower, and the guy's like, look, I'm going to go up, I'm going to let you out, and then I'm going to go down and come right back up, okay? And then I'm going to let you back in because you're going to die outside. So he, we go up, he lets us out, he goes back down. By the time he came back up, and it's, it's a church tower, 
my buddy Dave and I are on the ground, like huddled together, trying not to freeze to death up there. And he's like, I told you, like, you're right, sorry. And so we had to go to a bar in a casino lane. <laughs> I didn't go outside anymore because it was too cold. Uh, oh, Chris Frankie's been to Mexico City and loved it. Go back. Yeah. So, Mom, what's the favorite place your mom has been? Best vacation with children and grandchildren? Um, I think, well, there have been so many. But probably the most memorable one as of, well, Africa, Rwanda, and Tanzania. That was really memorable. Mm -hmm. And uh, watching the kids interact with the different the local kids. Uh, yeah, the yeah. local kids. Um, but I I loved uh, Peru, and uh, also when we went to uh, Buenos Aires and Uruguay and Brazil, mm -hmm. that was that was really special too. Yeah, so. no, that's a good one. I'm trying. Like I don't. For me, I think what I've liked about our trips, traveling with the grandchildren, is. You know, I, I love my grandparents, and we. But our, you know, going to see grandma, it was we'd make. She made cookies. We didn't even get to make the cookies with her. She made cookies. No, she made the cookies. Yeah, it's like we're, my my trips going to grandma. I have great memories, but it was like we would watch Joker's Wild, uh, and The Wheel, and then we listen to Cardinal Baseball on the swing outside. She lived on the farm, so that's what we did. We had great memories. We played croquet and stuff, and, and so we we had that she to talk about. Food. She had great food, and and when I see my kids interact with my mom, my dad. They're not just talking about, oh, making cookies or how was school. They can talk about, remember that trip. And that's one thing is we haven't had a trip together since since Africa in 2019. And so it's like we need something because now I mean, we have a 14-year-old. And so 14-year-olds don't always want to hang with grandparents or, or the family. So it's, you got to get something to get them together. You know, because, you know, once you're, when you're like in your 20s and you're like, oh, I want to go see grandma again. You're like you have that, you know, you know. Well, the neat thing about that trip was that really – Nobody had a choice about doing anything other than <laughs> staying on the safari and doing what the group was going to do. Yeah, and, and, and the, but we all and they, and they did fun. a great time. They had a, yeah. they did a great job making sure we were all were fun. But for me, it's just the fact that I know my kids have true relationships with their grandparents instead of just oh yeah, she was that lady that watched wrestling. You know, like was that was that dad's grandma? Yeah, that was dad's. Grandma. Yeah, she liked wrestling, uh, and she just scared me so. Her, yeah. her house was very dark. Very dark. Very dark. So, uh, Ken McCabe, thank you very much for the super chat. Can hostels be a workable accommodation option if you require cool, silent darkness to get good sleep? Oh, no. So. No, though I will say hostels are getting better with private rooms. Uh, so, there are more options now. Like, there's places like Porch, which have really good uh, hostel options. Um, actually, I would say Lisbon is actually better for hostels and hotels. Um, but no, I because one of the things is you have like a lot of hostels kick you out during the day too. So I mean, I would not say it's a good sleeping destination, to be honest. I would look at Airbnbs because you get the place and there's nobody coming to clean in the middle of the day or anything like that. So that Chris has got 10 days in Salford. Dang, that's a lot of days. Oh, that's a lot of days. Um, that's nice. You've got two, uh, three days just seeing the Mozart sites, the, going up to the castle, the whole, and the festoon, the, the fortress on the hill, and things around there. You can do, yes, you can do the Sound of Music tour. We've done that. If you like, it's worth it if you like the Sound it of Music. If you, if, yeah, Garmisch Spadkirch, you can go over to Germany. Munich is, an, I think, an hour and a half, and it's a local train. You can go over there. There's all kinds of Regensburg. You can get to there. There's a lot of things in Germany you, you can go, go to right by there. Innsbruck. Yeah, well, in, Innsbruck's a bit farther, but, yeah, you can do yeah. that. Um, yeah, you got plenty of time. Lots of stuff you can do there. If that's going to be there, I, I would actually, if you're only, if 10 days of Salzburg is a lot, I might do five days of Salzburg and then split it off with some other yeah, stuff. Maybe go to Hallstatt farther south. Yeah, I think. To do that. Do several places. So, Magnus and Jervis, when he with Darian, must be smiling because someone said spaghetti ice. <laughs> he, he loves his spaghetti ice. He's a good man. Let's see. Steve, hey Mark, when are you planning on going back to Maui? It was so beautiful, relaxing, adventurous at the same time. Proposing my fiance on Black Sand Beach in a lava cave was incredible. Yes, and it looked incredible in the pictures, Steve. And congratulations to you too. That is so awesome. So we actually didn't get to get to Maui because Liam tested positive for COVID. So we could not leave. We got to quarantine for two weeks at home instead of going to Maui. He did not. He he had no symptoms. Nothing there. He tested negative. The three tests we took right afterwards, but we did not get to go. 
So I'm jealous. <sighs> but I'm really happy for you, Steve. That's awesome. Congratulations, you too. Mary Ellen wants to go to Montevideo. Yeah, so Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen's been hanging out with us for a number of years. Says, I want to go to Montevideo. Uh, so if you're going to Uruguay, Montevideo is a really chill capital city in South America. Uruguay is actually a pretty safe country, especially for South America. Um, I know some people were upset with my my what to know about Uruguay video because I showed Rio de la Plata and not Punta de Este when I was talking about the beaches. Well, I wasn't there personally, so in Punta de Este I didn't have any pictures, so it's just the other stuff. But Uruguay is a nice, easy, safe destination to go to. Uh, Montevideo, going over to Colonia is a great it's UNESCO town. Uh, if you're going to Buenos Aires, give yourself a couple nights in Uruguay. Do a night in Colonia, a night in Montevideo, yeah. and then come back on the boat or a little bit more time. It's well worth it. Uh, we had a nice time over there. People in Uruguay are total chill, like total chill. So it is really a nice place to go. So, oh, relate music. Sorry, I didn't see your super chat. Thank you very much for the super chat. So you came to Key West. I live across. Oh, Symphony. No kidding. So Symphony is El Symphony is a Cuban restaurant. There's actually two. There's one in Key West, and there's one on Stock Island. Uh, we went to the one on Stock Island. Fantastic Cuban food. It was amazing. So that is really cool, really cool. Thank you for the super chat. And uh, we had a great time there with my buddy Jeff, filmed a bunch of stuff, so I'll have those, uh, I'll have those out probably in a few weeks, uh, so they'll be good. Jay Williams, how about Greenland? I'm still hitting myself, kicking myself, because I was in Iceland and we could have done a day trip over to Greenland, but we, were, we, were, we had just driven for two weeks around Iceland and we were – stressed out from all that driving and the fjords and stuff. So it was kind of like, I just want to chill. I just want to chill. So what so language that. in Africa is most useful? English. English, French, English than French uh, would be the two. That's from Lee Bridges, a member, an old time happening person with us. Good, good, good. <laughs> So Purdue just watched Greenland, the movie, last night. I just read the uh, Wikipedia summary of that movie today, actually, because <laughs> one of the highlights of it came in uh, on my feed, so that was funny. All right, to go. Let's hit the road, Jack. Hi. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi. So Susan went to vacation with Grammy. She's paying. Very nice. With daughter and son, married with two teens over 16. Suggestions that don't include Mexico. Uh Costa Rica is good because uh, there's enough activity activities to make it worthwhile. Um, you could go to Peru. That's another good one. Um, if you're looking for island stuff in the Caribbean, I would probably go with Jamaica for that. Uh, if you're looking to take them to Europe, I would probably go with Italy or France because there's enough stuff that they've seen at over 16 that'll interest them because it's stuff I've seen before. Uh, that would be my kind of go-to right there. So Susan, I hope that can help. And that's cool. Grandma's going to take them out there. That's a really nice thing to, to bring the family together. That's cool. Oh, Bravo. Thank you very much for the super chat. I saw your video in Arkansas. It just came out a couple days ago. I'm glad. You should definitely visit Little Rock. Lots of historical places to visit there. Uh, you are right. So when we were there, so we went through and we came to Texarkana. And my God, the road construction in Texarkana is horrible. But I'm sure you already know that. Um, but, yeah, we went on through. Then we went to Hot Springs. and Because we were like, well, we could stop in Little Rock for a night. And we were debating and then doing that. And then we have – one of Jocelyn's dad's good friends, uh, he lives there, and it was Thanksgiving time, and he had not celebrated a holiday with family in something like two like decades. Like he's kind of a hermit, and so she's like, "We need to get up there because we're gonna have to say we're here. Let him know it's okay." And then like you know, it's like a turtle like come out of his shell. So we ended up cutting little rock out and just going up to Yellville by where he lived, and we stayed there for a week. In Yellville, Arkansas. Not a lot there, but that's where I filmed the video. Um, and so then he, we got to see him spend some time with Uncle Steve because uh, I know for him, he's like, people, it's so nice. So it was, it was a good experience. So, But Arkansas, the natural state, actually really great, um, really beautiful state. Though I will say when you're driving the windy roads with very little lit stuff, it can be very dangerous at night. So do be careful. Harry has a question. Do you like Seattle? Um, actually, I did. I like Seattle much more than Vancouver. If you got to choose between the two, I would go with Seattle. 
Um, I like the pop museum, of pop culture there. That's really cool. It's a little pricey, but it's worth it. I felt um, food was really good. Um, we had some went, went some good bars. I mean, there there are some issues there, but overall, it, we had a really good experience when we were there. All right, here's a question I do love. What do you do if the locals don't speak English? Well, having traveled to like 70 some countries and most of them didn't speak English as a native language, people me, will always communicate. Like if you're not sure what's on the menu, I mean, oink, oink, goes a long way. And and cock -a -doo -doo. it sounds silly, but it, you know, there there's certain things you can do and and people will always want to communicate with you. Like some places are super communicative even if you don't speak the language. But mom, how many languages do you speak? One. And how many countries have you been to? 50? Something like that? 40 some. 40 some. And, and she gets around just fine. People will help you out. Like that is one thing I think really keeps people from traveling internationally well, sometimes. It was like that one um, Dutch guy that came up to me and he, he said, well, you speak German. You speak German. I'm like, no, I don't, no, I don't speak German. But, you know, he, he conveyed what he wanted to say, and we talked back and forth, him speaking his language and me speaking mine. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be surprised how easy it is to kind of figure it out. Because that's one thing, and my dad will say this ad nauseum, there's good people everywhere in this world, and when you travel around, you realize we're all not that different. You know, when people hate other countries or something, it's just silly because – we're all we're all in this together. We're all going through COVID. We all hate getting cable. We all hate paying taxes. We all love trying good food. So you always have something you can you can talk to people about. And actually, this is one thing. Um, you know, people always ask, "What's some, what's the topic of the conversation?" Because that's how friendships are built. It's like we have something in common, and we talk about that, and we grow from there. Well, now everyone in the world has a topic of conversation. What happened to you during COVID? What did you do during, during that? You know, and just think about it. We're all watching Netflix all around the world. <laughs> so you can talk about, did you watch Tiger King? Did you? <laughs> you know, so it is kind of funny how that works. So Ken McCabe, thank you very much for the super chat. Best tea, tip to meet people while soloing in an Airbnb. So traveling by yourself, whether it's Airbnb or hotel, what I do, because I travel by myself a lot, I actually go to a bar and I'll sit at the bar I won't sit at a table by myself yeah, yeah. because you don't meet anybody. Sit at the bar because the other people at the bar are sitting by themselves. Bartender can tell you something. I actually get a lot of really good tips. Um, like I'm going to Iowa. I'm going to be filming there this week. And I'm going to get Des Moines. I already know. It's like, oh, in the evening Des Moines, I'm going to go hit the bars and go talk to the local bartender to see what I need to know about Des Moines so I can make some videos. You know, And, it, and it's amazing how you can meet people Rocket that way. science research. Yeah. And, and I think another thing is if there's something you like to do, like you like comic books, go to the local comic book store and check yeah. it out. You know, or you like the gym, hit the gym. You know, you pay a, 10 euros for one time fee. You might meet somebody there. They spot you, you chat up. You might have something to go to dinner with, learn about the town. You move on with your life, but you met somebody. So like going to art fairs. Yeah, art fairs, mom, stores. She has met so many people from stores. Like going back to our Norway example, making yeah. friends in, in different places. So it is really cool. Let's see. Wesley has it. That's non-touristy city to visit in August. In the U.S. <sighs> in August? Everywhere is hot and disgusting. Um, I would go for like uh, Maine. But that's still kind of busy. Well, and tour yeah, it's touristy. Still, yeah. It, uh, that's a tough one. Maybe like a, if you want a big city like a Milwaukee or a Something like that, or Kansas City might be nice because lots of tourists don't really go there, though they should because they're nice towns, nice cities. Um, Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Oh man, Columbus, Ohio. Man, people in Columbus, Ohio love Columbus, Ohio, and they will make sure you have a good time. They're going to tell you anything about it. Yeah, New Hampshire's got some nice stuff too. Yeah. Kansas so. City. I mean, you could hit three midwestern cities. Yeah. So Haley Ha has a question. How is public transportation in Santa Rita, Greece? Is it better to just run a car or ATV than ride no. the bus? No. Walk it. Walk it. Take it. Okay. When you get off the ferry, take a, take, take, a take a taxi to your place, and then you're just going to walk. Otherwise. Yeah. Otherwise, it just, yeah, just don't. Don't, 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 don't. So Terry Finley says, go to Pittsburgh in August. Yeah. Pittsburgh, nice town. Mm -hmm. Don't tell people you chose uh, Philadelphia over Pittsburgh. Just saying, I, I got that recommendation today. But you know, um, Philadelphia might be a good place to go to. It's true. Okay. So the corporal, best countries for an Eastern European road trip. So road trip. So 
Paul, having worked in Poland for a number of years, I'm really glad they have a better highway system now than they did before because it was hell. It was hell driving there. Um, but it's gotten better. You can easily do the Baltics, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, just drive them around. You can get a, a you got ten days a week and a weekend. You can see a, most everything in those ten days. That's a nice thing I like to do. I've done that actually a number of times. So Robin Ivy is asking me the wrong question. Healthiest city? <laughs> yeah, uh, probably Copenhagen with the amount of bike riding you have there and stuff, and healthcare system yeah. and food and options. Um, and because it's so expensive, you can't afford food anyway, so you can save money that way <laughs> and calories. Maybe, um, let's see. Maybe a Stockholm, not Stockholm, but uh, Oslo. Oslo. No, I would so, go Copenhagen over Oslo. Okay. So, uh, Montserrat Gilmore, do you think we'll be able to go to Finland this year? As Finland is not a country that really survives on tourism, I think they'll be later to let people in than other places because the rest of the year is a really tough call. Um, so. So I'm not sure about that. Um, staying in Copenhagen for a month. Anthony. Oh, Copenhagen for a month? Yeah, yeah. that's oh, Copenhagen is a great town. So my I had students that I took students there years ago, and they loved it. Like that was okay. So that city and Vienna were the two cities that students fell in love with the most and didn't expect to fall in love. So like they were like, oh my god, I didn't know I was going to like this so much. And and Copenhagen was a really nice surprise. Oh, Todd, Seychelles or Maldives. I'd probably go Maldives. But you can't go wrong with either one, so don't even worry about it. Let's see. Here's one. T7 Man, what do you search for before traveling to a country? I will search the food, the culture, best sites, what locals say, what locals think, what tourists think about it, best place to stay, best place to kind of get to know the culture best. I will, I mean, I will go through hundreds of websites and I will go through multiple travel books and I will ask our fans, these are places we're going to go. Do you have any advice? I will get as much as I can. And I have an idea of where we want to go. And I've kind of collect this over the years and you know, it's years and years of travel. I remember people talking about different places and saying things about different places. I'm like, we should go there. And we usually ask our fans, we usually go one or two places a year that you are our fans choose for us to go. And you all have never story, steered us wrong yet. So Lee Bridges says the healthiest city is Boulder. Lower Colorado. Yeah. Everyone does mountain sports. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so let's see. Mike, I have not been to Easter Island. Uh, that's not one there. Tackle Turtle. How do you search what locals think? Um, if you look on Reddit, if you look on Quora, you'll see things like why do people think what do people think about our town? And people actually comment on there. You can find stuff. You can find Facebook groups about pretty much any small town to big city around the world, and people will talk about it. And you hit that translate page on Google and you'll get a lot of information. Let's see. <clears throat> PA Brunos. Well, there's a Pennsylvania fella. My goodness, it's been a while, my friend. Wow, we were we talking? We were talking what? I mean, probably. Seven years ago, eight years ago. Anyway, cheers, Mark. Mrs. Walters, what is your biggest surprise you've got when traveling abroad, positive or negative? How good the beer was in Lithuania and how good the beer was in Germany, but how bad the beer was in Poland. You're like, wait, you're all right there together. What's going on? Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, now, best positive, just how many good people there are in the world. I mean, I, I can't say it enough. You make good people everywhere, and we've made friends everywhere. So that's the best positive. Negative. Just the people that will try to scam older people, like, and they'll try to scam me, uh, younger people too. But like the people that will try to take advantage of older tourists, and that's U.S., Italy, anywhere. It just, it just sucks. I just hate that. So, uh, let's see, Philly Airport. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Ooh, Fabio, have you ever stayed at a haunted hotel? Um, if I had, I didn't know it was haunted. But we have friends that went to the Shining Hotel, you know, the hotel from the Shining, oh, and they they went by the room, they stayed next to it. Nothing happened. So, I'm I the, though though I am a travel channel, I am not like the travel channel and talk about ghost stuff all the time because I don't believe in that crap. So, so there is that. Unless they hire me, then you know, whatever. <laughs> what are your favorite city, Illinois cities. Favorite Illinois city? Uh, 
cities, Chicago, Chicago. Quincy, Quincy. Um, let's see. There's um, it's in the north. Galena, Galena's nice. Yeah, Galena's nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. So Lombo Gaming, would you rec would you recommend traveling to Japan or Germany? Yes, I would. Both of them are. I've been to both, oh, yeah. and I, they've both been fantastic experiences. And so, yeah. So I can't say it enough. Oh, oh here's one. Lee or. Bridges. Uh, by the way, August is wonderful in San Francisco because the cool breeze is off the water. Oh, well, I'll have to remember that, Lee. We don't need to go there. I still need to go to San Francisco. Same here. So, and Dad Bill said he'd like to go back. Yeah, Bill and I want to go there. I could chaperone. That'd be fine. I could take care of Dad when you, he gets annoyed. Yeah, you, you can chaperone. Can you tell we've been drinking since about six? Anyway, moving on. Um, oh, Joker. Joker, I haven't seen you for a while. Good to see you again. Best state or region to visit for the first time in the U.S.? I would, first off, Joker makes a really great question because I already realized you want to pick a region. You can't do all the U.S. It's just too big. You pick a region. I usually recommend the southeast of the U.S. So you can see the places like, you know, Charleston, South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, Atlanta, New Orleans, uh, Bo um, Natchez, Mississippi. Like I like that. Um, other things, if you go in the Northeast, you go, you know, you, or actually, you can just you fl if you flew into Boston, you can do Boston, Providence, go into you know Mystic, Connecticut, New York City, and then down to D.C. And that's all on the train. You don't even have to have public transportation, or you don't have to have a car, so that can make it easier for you too. So there is that. Um, I see. Some people say California. Some people say Texas. Yeah, but there's a lot of driving for those, but. Uh, you want to see a lot of states. That's how I usually go. So, oh, where'd it go? Shane wants to please do a Dubai video. So, Dubai was January, was originally supposed to be this January 2021. That was the one that was penciled in for this January that, of course, didn't happen because of all the fun stuff going on. So, that sucked. So, Mr. L. Thompson, have you ever been to West Africa? Where would you recommend? I have not been to West Africa. Uh, my friend Fernando, he ran a hotel compound in Ghana for a number of years, and he enjoyed it there. Uh, I would have to ask him. Um, I will. Well, he's the he's the Italian wedding that keeps getting pushed back, so I will have to ask him some good places to go when we are there. Um, let's see. Do -do -do. Stacy, recommend, recommendations on Jamaica. So if you don't know, we have a Don'ts of Jamaica, Shocks of Jamaica, What to Know Before You Go to Jamaica uh, to help you out and really watch those. They'll give you everything you need to know. But recommendations, one, pay for the skipping the line uh, when you're buying. There, I have a video on it too. Um, to skip the line at customs because, man, that line is insane long and just skip it so you go to the Club M Mumbai. Or no, not Club Mumbai. Uh, Mobe, Club Mobe. Um, that was easy. Uh, two, don't get upset with the people that are always going to ask you to buy stuff because remember that's how they make a living and there's no social network to help them. So whatever they sell, they make as long as you're respectful. I mean, I said, I would tell you like, I already got all my, uh, you know, Hey, thank you for asking. I got all my souvenirs already, but respect. I appreciate what you're doing. So I can't help out. And everybody was like, fist bump, respect. See you later. It left me alone. But the people that just got mad at them and would yell at them, like, you don't need to do that. You'll see that on there. People either love Jamaica or they hate Jamaica. And a lot of times it comes down to people just getting upset with people asking them to buy stuff. So have a heads up for that. All right. So sloppy recommended place to visit for a first time backpacker. My trip to 13 European countries over two months got canceled because of the pandemic. Damn it. That sucks. Um, so first time backpacking. The first time you're going to go, I mean, again, like you had two months. So there's a lot of stuff you can do. I actually enjoyed backpacking South America better than I enjoyed backpacking uh, Europe the first time because it was so different and it was like you were back and like you were busting it and your crazy stuff going on and meeting like crazy travelers. It was really cool. But if I was going to do it, I would probably fly into Peru, Peru to Bolivia, Bolivia to Chile, Chile to Argentina, Argentina, Uruguay to Brazil and fly to Brazil. That would be my recommendation. Um, if you're doing the Europe one, you already had your trip already set up, so you probably already know what you're looking at. Um, let's see, Harry. Let's see, Harry's question. Oh, yeah. I thought I had you there, Harry. Sorry. So he said, well, does you speak any other languages besides English fluently? My mom can speak three different languages, Thai, Laotian, and English. Cool. 
Um, so for me, English, obviously, um, languages that I feel I could teach in, I could, I feel like with practice, like to warm up again, cause I haven't traveled, so I've used them, but I feel like I could teach in German, Spanish, and Portuguese. Um, I can have basically like, you know, six to eighth grade conversations in Italian and I can be a nice tourist and ask good questions in French and Lithuanian. So there's that, but I see mom's getting tired. So we're going to wrap it up here. It is 945. So, um, I just want to say thank you to everybody for supporting us. Um, during during COVID, I'm glad we could do all these live feeds over the last few, like the last year. Um, for the for May and June, I just want y'all to know we'll be putting out three travel videos every Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. There'll be new travel videos, and we'll probably put out little shorts, and we'll probably be doing more live feeds because more and more as more and more places open up, we can start talking about different suggestions for what you should do in those places and what to look out for, and we'll start getting more information about the restrictions and what does that mean for you as a traveler. Uh, so we'll be doing that. But I want to wish you all a fantastic night. Thank you, everybody, for the Super Chats. Thank you to all the new members out there and our other members and patrons have been on here for a long time. We appreciate all your support, and we wish you all the best. And if you want to grab any cool Walters World gear, uh, you know, if you want to get your, your, your Union Jack Walters World jersey or shirt, you can go to um, – waltersworld.store, and you can pick it up there. But otherwise, I wish you all a fantastic evening. Um, look for more videos this Wednesday. We will have what to know before you go to Hungary. So hopefully it will be opened up for you to travel there too. So we'll say bye and see you later.